Um, this came out in The Economist this week, and I think is a really important comparison to note. So again, it talks about the, the efficacy of each of the vaccines, the Pfizer, the Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and AstraZeneca. But I think what it also emphasizes is key differences in the trial design. So the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines started around the same time, started March, April, and ended a bit earlier, kind of October time period. They were all done in the United States. And at the time that these trials were done, there were none of these, what we call variants of concern. So those are the genetic variants in the viruses. The ones that we're most concerned about at this stage are coming from the UK, coming from Brazil and coming from South Africa, which make the virus more contagious potentially more severe, meaning they cause more hospitalizations. And in some cases, particularly the South African and the Brazilian variants, they contain an escape gene, which allows the COVID protein, the spike protein to actually escape uh, the development of antibodies. So if you caught the regular strain of the virus back in March, and you then caught the South African strain of the virus in December, you could get it twice. That, that escape gene allowed you to get it twice and it escaped the, the antibodies that you'd previously formed. In addition, it escapes to some extent, especially South Africa and uh, Brazil variants, escape the, uh, the protein, the antibodies that are formed because of the vaccine. And, that, and because the Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccines were done internationally, and really for the most part, they were done internationally because people wanted, they, they wanted to see how these vaccines worked in people with HIV, for example, and in other, populations other than the United States, they perform the trials in the United States, in South Africa, and in Brazil, just as these variants of concern were increasing. And therefore, obviously, if the vaccines, if these variants of concern can escape the vaccines more, you're going to have a difference in the efficacy shown in the studies. You'll have lower efficacy because of the variants of concern. The other thing about the AstraZeneca vaccine is uh, it was designed in a way where you only needed one minor symptom in order to get tested for COVID. Whereas the mRNA trials were designed where you needed multiple symptoms in order to qualify for a test. So clearly, if you only had one symptom, the AstraZeneca trials are more likely to pick up very mild COVID-19 and register that as a case or a failure of the vaccine. Whereas the mRNA vaccine trials may not have picked up that mild of a case. So it would look like the effectiveness of the vaccine was lower in the AstraZeneca case, but in fact, we're actually just picking up more mild cases. So you really can't compare the efficacy across clinical trials. The other thing to note is that the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, kind of discovered that the longer you extended the interval between doses, the more effective the vaccine was. And we now have some data of people who got one dose, it's not published yet, but people who got one dose and then did not get a second dose for up to three to four months. And it looks like the antibodies in their blood do not decrease very much, meaning that it may well be that you maintain your antibody protection for longer. And the later you give the second dose, the better your response is going to be after that because there's maturation of your immune system and a number of different immunologic reasons why extending the time between doses may help. Now that's only in the AstraZeneca vaccine. We don't have information like that for the mRNA vaccines, but it stands to reason that extending the interval between doses might help boost your immunity and make it last longer. So there is reason that you know, it looks like Canada, based on the NACI recommendations, is extending the interval between doses to four months. But we have data right now up to three months, and hopefully we'll know, you know, before Canadians have to extend it to four months, whether extending it to four months is the right thing to do. I suspect it probably will be, and it's probably a better idea to extend between doses, both because you can get more people immunized with the first shot, and also because you may mount a better response if you extend between doses.